Hello everybody, this will be the conclusion of Messianic Jews, Are They a Trojan Horse for the Christian Church? Uh, so, I think they're, I honestly think they're, somebody's hacking into my computer, because that just slows down to a crawl at certain times of the day and the evening. But what can I tell you? So, just remember something. It was always the Jews that opposed the Christians back in the days of the Bible, in the days of the apostles. And I've always noticed something. It's always the Hebrew roots and the Messianic Jews always point to Rome as being all the evil in the world. Oh yes, it's the Pope, it's the Catholic Church, it's this, that, the other. You know, it, you know, and, and they even blame them for the killing of the apostles and Jesus. You know, the Catholic Church did not even exist in the days of Christ or the apostles. And yet they'll say, well, you know, it's the Roman system exists today in the, the Roman Catholic Church. Well, and they'll even try to tell you that Mystery Babylon is Rome. Well, let's take a look at a few scriptures. In Revelation chapter 18 and verse 24, the Bible, well, let's take a Revelation 18:21. And a mighty angel took up a stone like a great millstone and cast it into the sea, saying, Thus with violence shall that great city Babylon be thrown down and shall be found no more at all. Verse 24. And in her was found the blood of the prophets, the blood of the prophets, and of saints, and of all that were slain upon the earth. Okay? Revelation 16 and verse 6. For they have shed the blood of saints and prophets, and thou hast given them blood to drink, for they are worthy. Revelation 6, 17, verse 6. And I saw the woman drunken with the blood of the saints and with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus. And when I saw her, I wondered with great admiration. Okay. Um, now, Rome did kill a bunch of people in Christ. I have no doubt about that. But when were there prophets in the New Testament or the post-New Testament era? Um, I mean, the apostles were considered prophets in a lot of ways, yeah. But after they died, what prophets were there? I don't know of any. Jesus speaking in Luke 13, verse 33. Nevertheless, I must walk today and tomorrow and the day following, for it cannot be that a prophet perish out of Jerusalem. So, if Mystery Babylon killed the prophets, and Jesus says that a prophet cannot perish out of Jerusalem, uh, let's see, when I took algebra, if A equaled B and B equals C, then that means A equals C. If Mystery Babylon killed the prophets, and if it cannot be that a prophet perish out, perishes or dies out of Jerusalem, that means Jerusalem has to be Babylon. Matthew 23, thir verse 37. O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, thou that killest the prophets, and stonest them which are sent unto thee, how often would I have gathered thy children together, even as a hen gathereth her chickens under her wings, and ye would not. Behold, your house is left unto you desolate. He that hath the Son hath life. He that hath not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abideth upon him. Hmm. How about a Revelation 11 and verse 8? You know... Messianic Jews and Hebrew Roots people will never read the verses that I'm reading to you. Oh, oh, Mystery Babylon, that's Rome. That's Rome. 
That's Rome. Revelation 11, verse 8. The two witnesses, right? When, they're die when, when the false prophet kills them. And their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city, which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt, where also our Lord was crucified. You see, when they say that they're uh, when they say that Babylon is Rome, they're saying that their Lord was crucified in Rome. Ask them, what's the name of your Messiah if he was crucified in Rome? And they'll say, Yeshua. Well, okay. I can believe that. I guess Yeshua was crucified in Rome. But Jesus, who is my Lord, was crucified in Jerusalem which is spiritually called Sodom and Egypt. He wasn't crucified in Rome. He wasn't crucified in Mecca. He wasn't crucified in Istanbul, Turkey, or London, or the USA. How about Paul? You know, the guy that the, the Jews hate so much, that changed the law? Those of you that listen to me a lot, you hear me say the same verses over and over. Please understand, sometimes... I get new listeners, and they're not familiar with these same verses that you are. Sometimes this is the first time they've ever heard them. Can you imagine going to church for 30 years and never hearing these verses that I'm reading? They avoid them for a reason. Um, I bought some, I like J. Vernon McGee through the Bible. I used to listen to him on the radio uh, about 20 something years ago, and I liked his stuff, so I, you know, bought one of his commentaries, and I was reading through it. And I always noticed, he always skipped over these type of verses. Never commented on them. Skipped over them completely. It's as if they didn't even exist. That's telling. 1 Thessalonians 2, chapters, uh, verses 14 through 16. For ye, brethren, became followers of the churches of God, which in Judea are in Christ Jesus. For ye also have suffered like things of your own countrymen, even as they have of the Jews who both killed the Lord Jesus and their own prophets, even as they have of the Jews, who both killed the Lord Jesus and their own prophets, and have persecuted us, and they please not God, and are contrary to all men, forbidding us to speak to the Gentiles that they might be saved, to fill up their sins alway, for the wrath has come upon them to the uttermost. Who killed the prophets? The Jews. Jerusalem. Okay? And they'll always be quick to point out, well, you know, Rome's on seven hills. Well, get a topographical map. So's Jerusalem. Jerusalem's on seven hills, too. Every time you read the Bible, it'll say, and they went up Jer to Jerusalem. Why? Because Jerusalem's built up on seven hills. Matthew 23, 34, Jesus speaking, Wherefore, behold, I send unto you prophets and wise men and scribes, and some of them ye shall kill and crucify, and some of them ye shall scourge in your synagogues. Are the Romans in the synagogues? No. And persecute them from city to city, that upon you may come all the righteous blood shed upon the earth, from the blood of righteous Abel unto the blood of Zacharias, son of Archias, whom ye slew between the temple and the altar. Verily I say unto you, all these things shall come upon this generation. O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, thou that killest the prophets, and stonest them which are sent unto thee, how often would I have gathered thy children together, even as a hen gathereth her chickens under her wings, and ye would not. Behold, your house is left unto you desolate. What fruit is Jerusalem? Uh, what fruit has Judaism given us since Christ has died? Zip, zero, nada, nothing. Your house is left unto you desolate. Nothing, people. Judaism is death. They reject the Lord Jesus Christ. 
Judaism is antichrist to the core. You want to know what the definition of an antichrist is? Turn to 1 John chapter 2 verse and verse 22. Who is a liar but he that denieth that Jesus is the Christ? He is antichrist that denieth the Father and the Son. Whosoever denieth the Son, the same hath not the Father. But he that acknowledgeth the Son hath the Father also. Jews deny that Jesus is the Christ. They deny the Son. And according to the Bible, if you deny the Son, you don't have the Father. Period. And they will call this hate speech or anti-Semitic. Well, I'm sorry that the Bible is considered anti-Semitic by Christ haters. Uh, too bad. What can I tell you? Now, I am not a defender of the Vatican. I've lost some listeners because, I don't know, the Lord must blind these people. I show people these very verses in the Bible, the King James, which they claim that they believe every word, and they read Jerusalem. The Bible says Jerusalem, and then they say Rome. Rome didn't kill the prophets. Rome killed Christians. Yes, they did, in the Inquisition. Matter of fact, Tomas de Torquemada, who was the head of the Spanish Inquisition, he was the number two guy in charge in Spain, second only to the Pope of Rome. And if he said you lived, you lived, and if he said you died, you died. And he murdered Christians. If you got caught in Spain under Torquemada with a Bible, if you had a Bible in your language and you weren't authorized to have one, they killed you. They tortured and murdered people. And a lot of times, if you had a really nice house and land, they would accuse you of heresy, kill you, and the next thing you know, your friends that lived, you know, a, a couple days away that would come to visit you for the holidays or something, they'd come to your house, and there's a priest living there. And they go, oh, what happened to, you know, Joe, Joe, Joe that lived here? Oh, he was a heretic. Well, what happened to him? Oh, well, he was put to death for heresy. You'd find a priest living in your house. But before the priest did that, I mean, the, the Jew, uh, Catholic priest did that, the Jews were doing that too. Matter of fact, read about it. King Ahab, his wife Jezebel, she had uh, a guy that lived next door to him that had a, um, a vineyard, had him put to death for cursing God and the king. And then King Ahab took his land. Catholic Church learned it from Ahab and Jezebel. But if you look on the description underneath the video, there's a couple links that where the Jews support the Pope and the Pope supports the Jews. Matter of fact, that Torquemada guy that was head of the Spanish Inquisition, his family was Jewish. He was a converted Jew to Catholicism, and he murdered Protestants, or those that were protesting against what the Vatican had become. The church at Rome that Paul founded bears almost no resemblance to what is in Rome today, the Vatican. I am no papist. I've been accused of it. I've been accused of being a Jesuit. Me, a Jesuit. Right. Yeah. And uh, matter of fact, in the Jewish Encyclopedia, and I had a book. I wish I still had it. I've lost my books like three times. Uh, there was a Jewish Pope, believe it or not. A Jewish Pope. Can you believe that? A Pope that was a Jew. I believe, my opinion, I believe the Jews infiltrated Paul's church at Rome, turned it into what it is today, 
so that they can fool you people, us, the church, and when their Messiah comes, the beast, the man of sin, the son of perdition, the Antichrist comes, that person can destroy the, the Romans, the Roman church, and then proclaim that even Yeshua has come and tricked the Christians into thinking he's Christ. After all, the Vatican's built on seven hills just like Jerusalem is. And they always point to that, that the whore sits on seven hills. They always point to Rome. They all, all the religious books that I've ever read point to Rome. It wasn't until I had somebody tell me Jerusalem was on seven hills that I actually got a topographical map and counted them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Then I went to an Israeli uh, tourism site. They actually named the hills. Of course, they weren't trying to tell you about the seven hills, but, you know, they named them. Mount of Olives. That's where Christ is going to return to. So I believe the Messianic Jews are going to do the switcheroo, ha have their Messiah, Yeshua, and the false prophet will probably be called Elijah, the false prophet, that is, and destroy Rome, and then claim it's the fulfillment of Bible prophecy. That's my opinion. I think they're the Trojan horse. But there's a couple websites. One of them, um, in the description, click on the links, where the uh, Jews support the Vatican and the Vatican supports the Jews. The Pope supports the Jews and the Jews support the Pope. Personally, I think they're one and the same. The one link is from the Anti-Deflammation League, the ADL. That's kosher to the core. And then the other is the Simon Weasel Fall. Um, I call it Weasel, because the guy is a weasel. Um, Institute. I mean, all you got to do is go to the websites, these Jewish websites, read what the Jews have to say about the Vatican, and how they support the Vatican, and the Vatican supports them. And then look at the footnotes. Look at the links. I mean, this is their own websites. This isn't some Ku Klux Klan white supremacist group saying something. This is the Jewish websites themselves. Personally, I think the synagogue of Satan infiltrated Rome a long time ago. A lot of you don't know it, but Rupert Murdoch, the owner of the News Corporation, perhaps you've heard of him, uh, The Simpsons, uh, Fox TV. He's a Jew. Do you know he owns HarperCollins Publishing, book publishing? HarperCollins owns Zondervan. Zondervan's the largest printer in the English language of religious books, Bibles. And the they have the exclusive printing contract for the NIV Bible which is blasphemy. The NIV is just blasphemy, if you ask my opinion. What is a Jew doing owning a so-called formerly Christian publishing company, or, or I should say a publishing company of Christian, formerly Christian books? Infiltration, people. Infiltration. All right, let's go to the book of Acts. Chapter 26, verse 21. For these causes the Jews caught me in the temple and went about to kill me. Acts 26, verse 7. Unto which promise our twelve tribes, instantly serving God day and night, hope to come, for which sake, hope's sake, King Agrippa, I am accused of the Jews. Hmm. Acts 28, 19. 
But when the Jews spake against it, I was constrained to appeal unto Caesar. Not that I had ought to accuse my nation of. So, you know, the, the, the Jews had caught Paul and were going to kill him, and then a bunch of Roman soldiers came and sort of kind of rescued him. Um, not that they were interested in rescuing him, it's just that they saw a riot and they wanted to make sure they were on top of it. You know, that's what soldiers were doing back then. You know, they were sort of a police force. And uh, then when they find out that Paul was a Roman citizen, well, you know, they were uh, obligated to take care of him. So, so Paul, he was being charged with crimes, and he says, hey, I'm a Roman citizen. I appeal unto Caesar, which was his right, you know. Um, well, let's face it, you know. If you're in the United States, uh, you're entitled to certain things, or at least you were before the Patriot Act. But, uh, you know, that's, that's how it is. Now, this is words of Christ in red. Revelation 2, verse 9. I know thy works in tribulation and poverty, but thou art rich. And I know the blasphemy the blasphemy of them which say they are Jews and are not, but are the synagogue of Satan. Well, I'll tell you what, never hear that verse in John Hagee's church. Revelation 3 and verse 9, Jesus speaking, Behold, I will make them of the synagogue of Satan, which say they are Jews and are not, but do lie. Behold, I will make them to come and worship before thy feet, and to know that I have loved thee. That's going to be interesting, the day when the fake Jews, that the churches fell all over each other to worship, come and worship before your feet. And Jesus is going to have them do that. That's going to be an interesting day. So, when these, you know, and, and some of these Messianic Jews are deceived, okay? I understand that. I mean, there's some people that get mad at me because I, I think that there's a few of these people that are saved. There's got to be. I mean, you know, there, you go to TVN, they got millions of viewers I, I was an unsaved sinner, and I knew those people were fakes. There's got to be, out of the millions of people, there's got to be a couple, you know, a couple of them that are saved, that watch that garbage. You know, there's got to be a couple. I mean, you know, I could be wrong, but what can I tell you? Now, in Revelation chapter 12, and verse 9, and the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. Satan deceived the whole world, period. That's you, that's me, that's all of us. It's just a question of how deceived are we? I mean, there are things that I've had people point out that I was wrong about. and You know, if you could show me scripture, um, fine, I'll... I'll, I'll, I'll admit, hey, I was wrong. And I've been wrong on things. Which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. So, I am sure that there are Messianic Jews who are saved that have fallen for the lies of those that taught them. I know that I've been um, deceived by some of these church people. Some of them are deceivers and some of them are just plain deceived. Here's a wonderful verse. These are called the pastoral epistles. Um, pastoral as in um, pastors. 2 Timothy chapter 3. Timothy was a young pastor and 
who had been brought up all his life in the words of the Lord and scriptures. And Paul's writing unto him. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 11. Persecutions. Boy, you'll never hear that on TBN, will you? Persecutions, afflictions, which came unto me at Antioch, at Iconium, at Lystra. What persecutions I endured, but out of them all the Lord delivered me. Yea, and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. If you're not suffering persecution, you're probably not living godly. But evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. But continue thou in the things which thou hast learned and hast been assured of, knowing of whom thou hast learned them. In conclusion, am I saying that every Messianic Jew and Hebrew roots person is a deceiver? Probably not. Absolutely not. Um, you know, I've been deceived. They're, you know... They've probably been deceived, but but I'm sure that there's a lot of deceivers out there. So, you know, stick stick close to Jesus. You know, you don't need blood moons, shemitas, jubilees, tassels, temple ornaments, obscure feasts and laws. It's just, you know, love the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved and thy house. Love the Lord, love thy neighbor, stay away from idols, things strangled from blood, fornication, and you're doing pretty good. That's about all you really need. You know, if you want to keep Lord's Supper, try to keep Passover, tabernacles, hey, Sabbath, that's fine. But if you don't keep it, you're not going to lose or not be able to gain salvation. Salvation is in Christ. Grace. His love. We have a lot of liberty under grace. People don't realize the liberty we have. Personally, I don't eat shrimp. I don't eat, try not to eat pork. For salvation? No. It's not healthy. It's not healthy. You know, there was a valid scientific reason behind every single diet law in the Bible. Health and diet laws. Is it a salvation issue? No. Is it a health issue to keep you healthy? Yes. You know, if you eat poisoned shellfish, polluted waters, you know, shellfish filter water. And when you have polluted waters, the shellfish absorb the pollution in the water and when you eat that it's concentrated and if you eat that garbage and filth and you get sick what are you going to pray to the Lord and say oh heal me Lord heal me Lord the Lord's probably he might just say well pff, you didn't listen to me you got sick you know don't don't cry to me you know Maybe, maybe when you're ignorant of something and you don't know something, maybe he might heal you. But when you know, when you know not to do something and you do it anyways, I mean, you know, let's face it. You love the Lord, you stumble and fall. Maybe you, you know, sleep with somebody that has herpes and you catch it. Well, you knew better. You know, fornication. From what I understand, it's extremely painful when there's an outbreak. The Lord may not heal you of that. You knew better. He warned you. You know, I, I don't know. I've heard of people getting cured of AIDS, you know, sodomites. I've never seen it with my eyes, personally. I've heard of it. I don't know how much of it's true. But, um, so, all right, well... The, uh, look at the links, people, for the ADL, a Jewish group, about the Vatican's strong defense of the Jews, 
And then there's another um, website, probably the best website on the internet. It's called JesusIsLord.com. And uh, read those two articles. The Vatican and Judaism are a lot closer than most people would ever realize. And I think Rome is going to be the diversion of the Jews for when the Antichrist, the man of sin, the son of perdition, the beast, comes. That their Messiah can destroy Rome and have the Messianic Jews point out that even the Messiah, the Moshiach, Yama, Yahshua Hamashiach has come. Yeah, that's what I think. Just remember something. Jesus said the false Messiah would come first. When Jesus comes, the sky is going to light up like lightning from the east all the way to the west. And Paul said that we would be caught up together with him in the clouds with all those that died before us. If we're not caught up together in the clouds, in the air, to be with Christ, it's the wrong Messiah. I've preached this so many times, taught this. Very important, people. Almost all your pre-tribbers are probably going to fall for the false Messiah, the Messiah of the Jews. Somehow he's going to link together the, the Islam and, and the Hindus and the Buddhists and everybody. I don't know how Satan's going to do it, but I tell you what, he's had, he's had thousands of years. He's, since the time of Christ, he's had almost 2,000 years to come up with a plan. And let me tell you something, people, it's going to be a good one. Jesus said that even the elect, if it were possible, even the very elect would be deceived or fooled. I'm paraphrasing. Even the very elect, if it were possible, they would be deceived. Read your Bible, people. I can't stress that enough. You know, get on your hands and knees. Read James chapter 1. Ask the Lord for wisdom in prayer. He'll give it to you. Every time you read the Bible, you'll learn something. Don't trust Bible teachers. Don't t trust me. Don't trust anybody. Read it for yourself. Ask the Lord questions. Ask him to give you the answers. I, I have a bad feeling. This Bible study was on November 7th, 2016. The election is days away. I have a bad feeling. Something's, something's not right in my spirit. I don't think it's going to matter the vote. The Lord sets kings up. The Lord sets, tears them down. Jesus told Pilate, when Pilate said to him, Knowest thou not that I have power to crucify thee, that I have power to release thee? Jesus said, Thou would have no power over me at all, except it were given thee from above. Something bad. I feel something bad in my spirit, I kind of feel something bad is going to happen. I don't claim to be a prophet. I don't know. But I got a bad feeling something soon is going to happen. So, people, persecution is coming. And the church is not only asleep. The pre-trib rapture teachers have deceived everybody into thinking it won't happen to them. That's for the other guy. Persecution, that's for the other guy. So, I'll probably do a, a Bible study on that. <sighs> Alright, people. This is the end of Messianic Jews. Are they a Trojan horse? I think at least some of them are. Maybe not all of them. But then again, most of your churches are sold out to Satan. 
I, I, there's very few pastors I trust. I can't even name on one hand, five fingers, five pastors that I trust. I can think of three or four, and that's about it. So, well, all blessings, praise, glory, and honor to Jesus, the Lamb of God, slain before the foundation of the world. In Jesus' precious name, not Yeshua. His name's Jesus, people. That's what my Bible says. This is Chaplain Bob signing off. Amen. Check out the links for the uh, Vatican's and the Jews underneath the description. Amen.